I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city on earth. Beat a bop, bop, boom. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. And I'm Chris Susie. And I'm Picos Hank, the storm chaser on YouTube. Oh my God. No, you're not. That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, JT loves Picos Hank. Um, he is, if you are a fan of tornado watching and things I am. like that, <laughs> JT's a big fan of it. Um, and Picos Hank is. Uh, in our humble opinion, that uh, he is the best storm chaser on YouTube. He Fair gets enough. really Fair great enough. footage, and he does go and help, you know, aid people after the tornado passes, but he always makes sure you get that good, that good that inside. That good footage. <laughs> inside it's the that tornado good footage. footage. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anywho, that is not the topic of today's episode. No, much um, darker. Yeah, a lot darker. Um, so today, I don't know if anybody who's listening to this podcast uh, is aware of the drama that is going on with The Conjuring House right now. But as a paranormal uh, group, if you will, we, of course, were privy to it. And uh, we love some tea every once in a while. So I have sifted through all of the tea for you and it is served and it is very hot. Um, All right. It is very hot. Um, so uh, do you want to preface with this episode? Um, I'm going to be referencing a lot of screenshots and uh, files and things like that that uh, were mentioned in Jason Hawes's video over on YouTube. He was able to get together all the employees that are involved in this drama, if you will. And he did a big, uh, you know, uh, filming on Zoom, and they provided him with all these screenshots and things like that. So they're not public necessarily. I mean, obviously they are public to a degree because they're on the internet. But, but they're not our property. Yeah, they're not our property. So um, if you do want to see the physical screenshots or these documents, even though I'm going to read you everything it says, if you want to see the physical ones, go watch Jason's video. I'll link um, it down below. Yeah, it is very interesting, very thorough, uh, and a really great reference point because he did it in real time of all of this happening. But he also is a little bit closely related to this, and we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Let's so, talk about that. All right. So, basically... <laughs> It's kind of hard to figure out where to start with all this drama because we're going to be jumping through the timeline a little bit as we go. But um, basically, the gist of what is happening right now is the owner of the Conjuring House has been threatening former employees with lawsuits for telling the truth. Yes. That's essentially the idea that we're going for. And now we're going to go in more depth of that. So... Um, the first thing I think that's worth mentioning is the original post that the Conjuring House made. Also worth mentioning, the Conjuring House has since deleted their whole Instagram. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Not that they followed anybody. They only followed Taylor Swift for some <laughs> odd reason. I knew that. I knew that. Yeah. Good on you. <laughs> Taylor lost a follower i know this is the, i'm outraged i know but the whole house <laughs> was like we're not following anybody but taylor swift that that's swift. what the, that's what the ghost re requested but um and she listens to that <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't spoil things anyways sorry, sorry. um so, oh. <laughs> so basically um the Conjuring House since deleted their Instagram, and uh, there is no telling if there were any posts that were made on Instagram at any point uh, out of the heat of the moment or what have you, because it seems to be a running theme throughout all of this. But the Facebook is still very live and active. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, uh, basically, Jason Hawes was able to do all of this in real time. Uh, and if you're not familiar with Jason, he is uh, from the original TAPS team. He still is a part of TAPS. Um, Do you know him, Chris? I've met him on a couple. I of knew days. that. I knew that was coming. 
I like, mean, but at events, it's not like we were hanging out. Right. <laughs> sure. Yeah, he's a very interesting guy. Um, but uh, he also is a little bit personal, uh, personally connected to this because Satori, um, if you ever watched uh, Sam and Cody, is that their names? Yeah. I oh, yeah, so. Sam mm-hmm. and Cody, um, the YouTubers that recently did, like, the big investigation they did of the a week, a, a week solid. Yeah, yeah, they did. They did a week solid um, there. So you saw Satori and her um, fiancé in that, and Satori is Jason's daughter, which... Wow. Which m- puts it into an interesting context. Yeah. Because um, having any legitimacy in this field is very difficult to come by, mm-hmm. uh, and to squander legitimacy in this field is so devastating, especially since you don't just take yourself down, you take everyone else in the field down a few notches exactly um, yeah i mean it's a good point and we're seeing it with like zach beggins and you know whenever the criticism comes against them anytime there is a question of validity it doesn't just affect the person who's doing the you know engineering right it affects everyone because all of a sudden the entire field is knocked down yeah because who's gonna why bother believing exactly you know, anything well exactly and um and if you've been keeping up with the paranormal community online in every facet if you will um it for the past i don't even know since the internet's existed <laughs> there's always some drama usually happening this one just i think is really catching a lot of attention because it is such a famous and well-loved home and story well but and it, because these owners took over mm-hmm. recently and changed the very vibe of the place for mm-hmm. a lot of people who investigated there. And that probably brings a lot of focus on it as well. A lot yep. of people start really paying attention to kind of a political you know, right. atmosphere of who's being allowed here? What are they being allowed to say? What are they being allowed to do? Why... Why are investigators being told what they can interpret? You know, why are they being told what they're allowed to express they felt? You know, all of those things become questions. And I think people started, like, having a more critical eye uh, over the management of of the Conjuring House. And that also brings pressure, right? Right. (laughs) Because now now the Conjuring House is under the pressure and scrutiny of a lot of people who feel like they were treated – uh, even us definitely felt definitely. like we were being um, penned in or 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 gagged. Really, we were being told what we could and could not say. It was insane. It was insane. Like I will say, uh, you know, like I'm the producer of this podcast, so I'm uh, in contact with all the people we go to. Uh, you know, I'm kind of like our voice, and uh, this was un freaking believable the 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 amount of stress i was put through or to debria. yeah and debria and mm-hmm. is the editor i mean re-edits after re-edits after re-edits we had to Such send micromanaging from it was an micromanaging. organization that had nothing to do with us yeah yep. it, it was so true uh the one of the biggest thing is is you know when you're a pair junkie we do a live stream all the way through for everybody and uh, uh, for for the everyone, all the pair junkies, and we do it the entire night. Where we stayed live for like almost not, I think like seven seven to nine hours in that range, and it was. And uh, uh, they found out that we did, and they made a they made us take it down. Like they were like really upset um, about it. And we're just like, we Even were just, that's really we, were like, we paid thousands of dollars to do this for a night and you won't let us live stream. You put it like a, like, it's crazy. I read all the rules. I didn't see that. So, well, they did get us too on <sighs> only one platform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. M- meaning it became difficult because, oh yeah, you know, YouTube, but also our, our podcast sits on other platforms. Right. And we were supposed to pay for each platform that this information was going out on. It was very strenuous i should say yeah it, it was extremely strenuous irritating to say the least but we'll get into that a little bit more because that is a very common theme yes. of conversation um so with the post that really spurred the public attention of what was going on uh it like i said has now been deleted uh but jason did get a screenshot of it and so i can read it to you what it said uh and like i said if you want to go 
see or anything that we're referencing, go watch Jason's video on his channel. Um, but so uh, on July 10th, the Conjuring House posted, and I quote, Happy July, everybody. Also, I should mention, there is, with this uh, owner, there is a lot of strong language that she uses constantly. So just bear that in mind. So I'm um, just letting you know, mostly, JT, so yeah, you can make I'll, note. Yeah, I'll mark it as explicit. But happy July, everybody. I'm hearing a lot of hateful rumblings from people who are not in the Conjuring House supportive moves by the sounds of it. Which is a weird thing to say to begin with, but That's okay. Odd. So, as you know, TCH, the Conjuring House, mm -hmm. is the most haunted location in the world. Whoa! Which is That's a loaded. Bold. That's a loaded heard that statement. In but um, we attract hundreds of people from around the globe per month to Burlville, Rhode Island, to partake in one of our fucking experiences. And mind you, this is Whoa. a direct quote. We didn't get that offer. No. Uh, <laughs> 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 just saying <laughs> couldn't book that one <laughs> but oh god you was, gotta pay extra for that oh yep. god. 800 extra dollars but anyways <laughs> uh, i am told though that some members of the paranormal community and government officials she did not sp specify the government Go official. government officials <laughs> but and government officials keep attacking the conjuring house government officials i know i i who knows? Maybe it's like Rhode Island or something, and or uh, you'll see this woman, yeah, kind of okay. makes situations in her mind. But regardless, so yeah, government officials um, uh, keep attacking the Conjuring House. There are many wonderful paranormal investigators and honest government people who have consistently supported the paranormal field. Mm -hmm. Many members of the paranormal community have commended <laughs> the expansion of experiences at TCH to broaden the interest in the paranormal activity that demonstrates continuity of uh, consciousness. As to others, whatever. We really do... <laughs> heard yeah <laughs> we really do whatever whatever anyways under uh, the burn book we really do not care about people who abuse and attack people we consider them evil and wicked people mm. oh. in fact we never want any person with these personality afflictions to visit us at tch Even so if they pay you right she said nar yeah. anyways um yeah, so if you are among the wicked mood personality challenge, then stay away. Okay. We now have the kindest, hardworking people with positive outlooks on our staff, which I believe is only her right now because the entire team walked. Wow. So okay. she is the one I think she's referring to. But Good Lord. Our all, uh, our all new staff with just a couple previous staff who consists of, and she inserted the names, but uh, those names were redacted. Yeah. <laughs> there, uh, there's always growing pains when you start or take over a business. I am not apologetic that I needed to turn over the first wave of TCH staff, which you'll come to learn is not how that went down. But, <laughs> um, the reason for the dismissal of these people were uh, because they were cruel and hateful verbal abusers towards others. Suspecting that some staff are fraudulent in their investigation methods, I will never be defeated nor destroyed Whoa. now or at any time in the fucking future. So fucking be it. Uh -oh. And this is public it, uh, on the conjuring, not under yeah. her name, but this under, is under the, the conjuring, conjuring house. house. Goodness Ooh. gracious. Right. Very professional, right, Trisha? It's serious. It's insane. Um, Although there is argument for possession at this point. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. Not out of the question, but I appreciate Lord. the township of Burlville, Rhode Island for their support and guidance. I have helped TCH to grow its business and attract tourists from around the world since I brought or I bought the property and business in May of 2022. Oh, she's probably talking about local government. Probably. Like mm -hmm. Chamber of a Commerce or something yeah, like yeah. that along those lines. Well, they are evil and wicked, so. Right. <laughs> Stay away. 
Anyways, um, as always, we welcome any and all paranormal curious and or paranormal enthusiasts and seasoned paranormal investigators to our location, as long as they are not evil and wicked. Um, How do you gauge that? Right. Is there an evil meter there? Is there <laughs> I mean, do, do we take a breathalyzer test? <laughs> At what point do I mean, because like. Do evil people show up and say, hi, I'm evil. evil and or wicked <laughs> and or wicked and would like access to your abode. Um, yeah, that's weird. Uh, yeah. It's, it's weird that 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 is the phrasing that keeps coming up. Evil, evil, and, wicked. And or wicked. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, Lexi said, ooh, plot twist. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, every day we meet people who have traveled far and wide with anticipation to have an authentic paranormal experience. We look forward to hosting all of the good and morally upright people. Again, strange. It's very strange. strange. Because the world is filled with such people, much more than the hateful and wicked low density people. <laughs> I want to. I'm gonna low density. <laughs> I'm gonna steal that one. Yeah, that's you are a low density <laughs> person. <laughs> you are a low dense person. <laughs> I, I didn't realize that density and evil were you know connected somehow. <laughs> Nini says that uh, we need an evil meter. We do. Um, we'll put absolutely. it over the door, and it'll just go. But God, what I have to freaking deal with, y'all? Oh my God! Continuing on. <laughs> but the wicked and low density people that should look in the mirror rather than rage at people, animals, community, habitats surrounding them. What's happening to the animals? <laughs> <laughs> Who's attacking the animals? Goodness. I don't I have no idea, but apparently the low density people The low density people would attack animals low <laughs> density. This post is directed at specific people in the United States and elsewhere. <laughs> Specific and people so, anywhere. So she deleted this though. Yeah, she did. So maybe well, she looked back and was like, have pointed yeah. out. Oh, like yeah. girl. Good like, girl. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but this kind of sounds like the ranting of a yeah. unwell, unbalanced, possibly she, low density person. She uh she she probably was like drunk or something. And, and uh, no, this. she wait till you hear the text. Okay. She all talks right, like all this right. all the time. We gotta it's keep a, moving. You're right. Okay. So um, who I am told, who I am told are abusing and attacking people for no fucking reason other th than to terrify them from continuing their interest in consciousness and paranormal activity. The state of Rhode Island has defended its businesses that have come under attack from wicked and evil forces to curtail their freedom of expression. Ain't that ironic? Oh, yeah. Um, and then she goes on to talk about how Rhode Island was founded, but that's besides the point of what we're talking about. Wow. So I didn't this even... is all in the same. Yes. Yes. Um, so we're going to skip over the Rhode Island founding, but yes. Um, so let's after that. So just to give you the basis <laughs> of who we are dealing with here. Um, <laughs> oh, Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk says, sounds like my ex wife. <laughs> Trisha said I should copyright low density. <laughs> but gracious. Oh, welcome, Misfit. What's up? But goodness gracious. Um, now that you know who this person is, kind of, um, mm -hmm. let's talk about how she got the property to okay. begin with. Yeah, I'm interested in that. So Corey and Jen were the owners of the conjuring house before selling it to the current owner. Um, now, when I was listening to their description, you could tell they were kind of skirting around some details for the fear of legal trouble, I sure. think, mm -hmm. uh, because it was very legal in the whole process of getting, of her getting this property. But so the reason why the current owner has the house is because according to Corey and Jen, she felt entitled to it and put a lawsuit on us, which seems to be her MO. But right. Oh yeah. Sure. Uh, she put a lien on the house and Whoa. yeah. And stopped us from looking at other people to purchase the home because they had actually been trying to get Jason Hawes to buy the house. Right. Which makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that was not going to happen because of this situation. Um, she felt that an agreement that we signed, which was null and void in the state of Rhode Island, according to our lawyers, made her entitled to that house. So they had signed some agreement, I think, uh, because of... Oh. 
their uh, advisement from their realtor. Um, and so they had signed this document before the purchasing sales agreement had been signed. Okay. They had somehow broken that initial agreement due to the bad advice from their realtor. And uh, they didn't want to sign the purchasing sales agreement. So that's when she took them to court in the guise of saying she wanted to talk it out. Okay. Which is a weird place to do it if you're just trying to talk it out. But um, Jen said at first uh, she loved her because of how much she showed that she loved the property and how hard she was fighting to get it. Um, But overall, they felt like they had no choice but to sell it to her due to how long everything was being drug out. Okay. Sure. Um, And they did stay actively involved in this property as staff members. They just couldn't own the property anymore. Okay. Um, So that is how she got the property, just with a lot of legal threat and nuance, it seems like. Um, Now, mentioning back to the post, there was a big point in that post that was a major discrepancy, which really was... She claims that she let go of all these employees and her entire staff, Mm. which is not what happened. Okay. She had mentioned in that post that she fired everybody, but back on April 26, 2024, at 9.44 p.m., there is a screenshot of the resignation letter in Jason's video uh, because his daughter was the one who sent it. Dang. And all of the employees... Who's Satori? Yes. Satori sent it. Satori sent it. Uh, All the employees, Aaron Bush... Cody Desbins, Satori Hawes, Steve Mills, and Reed Bottiger, which was our tour guide. Oh, Reed. Yeah. Right. Uh, they all turned in their joint resignation letter. And this is what the resignation letter said. Oh, boy. Hello, I hope you are doing well, as I know the situation must be extremely tough, and I'm really, really sorry. We are meeting, uh, we are meeting this way. I spoke to the owner's name yesterday in regards to the business. We know that the owner often does not remember conversations. So I wanted this in writing in case that happens. The following staff members have gave their resignation yesterday to the owner through me since she has my number and that we, uh, that will take, um, uh, effect on Friday, May 3rd, 2024 at 11 AM. Mm. We have done our absolute best to manage this for her, the past months and to keep this away from the public. We have only been met with anger and accusations about the situation in December and January, which is when we went. Yes. And we'll get into that because a lot of weird things happened the week before we got there. Oh, wow. Um, so from the owner and the time leading up to her current, some, uh, and they blanked something out in this part, but, uh, she said, some pretty horrific things about members of the staff that were untrue, undeserved, and extremely hurtful. We all told her in February that if she put us in this position again, we would have no choice but to leave as every, uh, with every single staff member and every single staff member has gone above and beyond to try and help her and the business. We've done all of this out of love, care, and concern for her, the house, the spirits and the spirits, but we can no longer watch this happen as it has affected us deeply. The devastation that the staff feels for the entire situation can be described and uh, can't be described in words. We are legally uncomfortable to handle any cancellations uh, for bookings or refunds due to the current situation. I also asked the owner yesterday to shut down the house for the purpose of uh, another word blanked out, getting the business back on track. Mm. She declined that option. We strongly urge the owner to reconsider shutting down the house before uh, visits uh, visitors show up to an empty house and the rumor mill begins. Oh, boy. We want her to be out, uh, another blanked out word, before the house opens back up again. We cannot be held responsible for what happens with the business or the house after May 3rd, 2024. We are so sorry that it had to come to this, but we have no other choice. She has no caretaker coverage for the month of May. Sage will be there to handle tours on May 3rd and 4th, but no one will be at the house for overnights uh, starting May 3rd, 2024. There is no coverage for tours after May 4th, 2024. Should no one be at the house after 11 a.m. on May 3rd to check people in and run the events, we cannot be held responsible for the fallout from the situation from angry guests 
we have uh, been through this before when she did not show up on January 19th, 2024, which we will talk more oh, thoroughly about. Crap. She didn't show up. Oh, when wow. people so had there bookings. was like a chance she might not have showed up for us. For real. No, for real. Well, we got the boy Reed. Yeah. Well, it, Reed had to handle this situation too. So that boy's been through the ringer. Um, he looked he looked when he was giving us the 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 uh the tour, he looked like he was he was like hurting a little bit. Lorelai said sounds like she's evil and wicked. <laughs> <laughs> but despite knowing she was on the schedule and we were assured she would be there. The situation was devastating for the entire staff and reflected badly on the staff when it was not our fault. The owner asked me to give her all of our of Venmo information and uh, that is owed to staff. I'm not comfortable giving that to her directly in the light of her current situation. Unfortunately, that means I'm sending it all over to you trying to relay all of this over the phone would be difficult and probably inappropriate given her current blank at this point. Mm. We have to focus on the house, taking care of it and guests in all admin, uh, admin ways until next Friday and all realty or reality. We have handled this on our own for quite a while now. The Venmo information is below mm -hmm. and then it jumps to the next part. We are so sorry that it has come to this. It is not what any of us wanted, but in the light of all that has transpired, we no longer can rely on the owner to consistently manage this business in her current state. The staff cannot continue to work unpaid we want nothing for her but to be happy and healthy, but we feel she's not allowing that to happen for herself. We're fully aware we may not get paid for any of this, but we have chosen to remain at the house the last month out of our love for the house, the spirits, her animals, which I guess somebody, her animals, I don't, that was not mentioned further, but, um, and each other, we all truly wish the very best for the owner and hope she gets the help that she needs and can recover from this quickly and move on with her life in the way we all hope she can. So after the staff sent this email, um, about 10 minutes later, that's when the owner started sending very aggressive messages to the staff members via text. So... Uh, this, the messages started out with her begging people to come back to work because she needed them. But when all of them declined to do so, the messages started getting worse and worse and more angry. She threatened to uh, call people fake because she felt like that was the best way to attack them. Wow. People didn't want to return to, uh, because the work environment was toxic where she was verbally berating them, screaming, yelling, calling them nasty things. So it was understandable that they did not want to return. But on top of saying she was going to call them fake, she also was threatening to sue them if they did not return to work. <laughs> Which I don't know how well that would go over in court, but nonetheless. Um, and one of the first members um, that got kind of the brunt of the beginning of this was uh actually one of the previous owners Corey. Corey got accusations of stealing now he is not the one that we're going to discuss later who was like oh nine thousand dollars but Corey, it was a simple thing that should he was actually already resigned his wife was still working um at the other owner jen she was still working at the house and she was a part of that big leave but Corey had actually already been out of um out of the out of the business so just bear that in mind when you're hearing this so Corey, the previous owner continued to work at the house even uh when he didn't own it anymore because he loved the property but he eventually ended up resigning and he was one of the victims accused of stealing so Corey and Jen were out to dinner with Corey's parents for their anniversary when he got a voicemail from the booking agency that the house uses to do their events. It was directed towards the owner. It wasn't even about him, but it was calling his phone number. So Jen suggested that he forward it to their email so that the owner knows that the booking agency is trying to get a hold of them. Well, very quickly after... The owner sends a group text, even though they hadn't, uh, he hadn't spoken to her in a few months. Mm -hmm. And the message read, what the fuck have you done, Jennifer and Corey? How much money have you stolen from me? And mind you, this is a booking agency just trying to get a hold of her. What the heck? Yeah. 
what the fuck is blank leaving a voicemail for Corey regarding my fucking email about who's been messing with my blank account, including missing money. You have no fucking idea what is about to happen to you. Woo. So they respond with, uh, well, Jen responds, hold yourself. We did nothing. Uh, uh, we had no idea why they called us. I assume it's because he was on blank before we, uh, before we have nothing to do with blank, nor we have any idea what you are accusing, were accusing us of. Uh, we thought we would be nice and forward that to Kevin as it ad is addressing you. The owner responds to that with, you're lying, Jennifer. You and Corey were deactivated, so there is no reason why after an email from me expressing concerns of someone messing with my account that they would leave Corey a voicemail. I will, find, I will find out everything. And if you have siphoned money, you will be paying it back. So important to note, one of the employees that left uh, is a woman named Erin. And Erin was their uh, admin person. Mm -hmm. And she clarified this, that basically the way their booking um, platform worked, you can't really alter anything like that um it's very very limited you can't even change the uh bank account that the money goes to you'd have to make yeah. a whole separate account sure um and she was saying so there's no way it could have been happening that way and then also uh there was no way they could have been issuing refunds to people but putting in their credit card because you wouldn't be able to change the credit card on the system it had to go back to the card okay. where the purchase was made so she was like, it would fit, literally not be possible for them, especially because they did not have access to this account anymore. More than likely, she said what happened was probably they had been trying to get a hold of her because she had emailed them and they couldn't get a hold of her. So they just went down the line of phone numbers that were associated with the account. OK, um, so. That's crazy. Nuts. Um, and I won't read you Corey's messages because Corey is um, a lot too aggressive a little too aggressive for this podcast <laughs> to read what he said to her um but he gave her let's to say he was pushed far he and was, he pushed back <laughs> exactly um we can't read it's like too yeah it's very vulgar it like extremely vulgar um i mean it's already explicit listen i don't even have it written down it okay. was that aggressive right. so wow. okay um but yeah so uh uh, so Aaron, like I said, was one of the employees. So she literally completely refuted that that was possible. So big issue for her. Then Cody and Satori were next in line and they got called frauds publicly by the owner. Wow. And y'all know if you watched Sam and Cody's video, they love Cody and Satori at that house. They are yeah. like prized gems uh for their branding and so that's a big deal that they would call them um frauds but so even though there have been uh, multiple popular paranormal investigations who didn't necessarily believe in their knocking method and when they go to uh when they go to the conjuring house now this also very well could be following the narrative that this woman has set forward which you will hear a little bit later that seems to be a trend with her that she wants it everything to be on the same idea that she wants for the house but uh yeah um <laughs> <laughs> yeah i feel that uh anytime they uh people would who didn't believe in the method would ask caretakers if it's real and to be 100 percent honest every single time people would say it is real so if you're just going <laughs> on face value of what people are saying that it, it you know it does go against at least the stance that the conjuring house has taken. Mm -hmm. But uh, apparently Cody and Satori were also being told whose investigations they had to go to uh, to do this method, even if they didn't want to. What? So. Wow. Let's spill some tea here real quick. y'all. Yeah. Um, so we when we were planning our investigation, we had specifically emailed them at, on the off chance if it was possible. We had asked if Cody and Satori would like to join us, uh, at least for, you know, maybe an hour or two, you know, 
just to do the uh, the knocking method, just because we were curious uh, mm -hmm. about how it worked. And we were told that Cody and Satori do not do this particular method unless they come across people organically. Yes. Yes. Yep. 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 That was the exact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were like, exactly well, can we organically meet them made in it a sound coffee like shop? They didn't have true mm -hmm. affiliation with the conjure right. house. They exactly. certainly made it seem like they were this independent, you know, entity. Right, which is crazy because they were on the staff. Yeah, right. Um, so, which was like our impression, but uh, when we asked, yep, it was our impression that they worked for the Conjuring House. We were given the impression from the Conjuring House that they did not work there. Yeah, only yeah. to find out that they are the ones who wrote the letter of, mm -hmm. of resignation. Yep. Yeah, this this podcast is only a couple years old, and we. Um, you know, this was our first big haunting. We spent thousands and thousands of dollars to do it. And uh, I just, I dealing with her, I was like, wow, is this how they all are? And I, I honestly got like, like extremely disheartened after dealing with the conjuring house, coming back and just feeling micromanaged and all that. And then I was like, all right, we're going to try one more. And we, and, and it was Waverly Hills and Tina was the biggest breath of fresh air. I'm like, they're not all like this. She was very, she was amazingly accommodating. Wonderful. Well, it, and you know, armchair psychiatrist kind of situation is this seems like there's something deeper uh at stake here yeah. you know that that there is you know um some form of mania going on right. yeah, something yeah, yeah. something far more rooted in um in need for help you know i yeah. think i think this this individual uh should seek out whatever help is available because uh it does sound so highly detrimental right. you know, yeah. to, to all relationships Let's and to any business that you try to endeavor, especially when you start. And we, we got a good taste of it. We got a good taste right. of, we got a taste of, of right. we, we experienced things and had concepts based on our experience that they would not let us share uh -huh. mm -hmm. that they had yep. final say on whether or not we could sense or say what we witnessed or felt or, mm -hmm. and it's like, that's so strange because you would think that the wider variety of experiences in a location, the wider a variety of people will want to come and try to suss out what's going on. Right. But when that narrative got so thin and tight yep. that it was like, oh, okay, you know, like not even you couldn't suggest anything. You couldn't suggest a thing. You, no. you know, you couldn't yeah. suggest anything. In the final video we had to send them, they would they sent back so many re-edits on Chris just suggesting something. Maybe this. Did not, he's not That's saying this process. is a fact. Right. Yeah. He's just suggesting things. And Debria had to go back and cut out all of the things Chris suggested. I'm like, this man suggests a lot. It's like his thing. And so it's just like crazy. It, like right. he comes yeah. up with when, good ideas and he's like, and he thinks it in a different way. And then they come and then she comes back and goes, he can't think any type of way. Because it didn't fit her narrative. Yeah. Which so Tori straight up said that is a big thing with her is everything yeah. has to fit the narrative she wants. Yes. Um, but it is very sad that for Cody and Satori, um, you know, they had felt like they were uh, animals in a zoo. Right. Because yeah. they were at her beckoning call and there was nothing they could do about it. Weeks. Uh, because they felt like if they turned down a um, a. Uh, investigation where the the owner wanted them to do the knocking thing um they felt like if they said no their uh job would be on the line right wow. essentially uh so after uh so the messages that satori got uh were pretty brutal uh so uh, the owner ends up sending Satori a message out of the blue a couple days before the Facebook post was made, that crazy rant uh, that reads, I have no idea what you are trying to achieve, but I'm hearing crazy stories of the bullshit that you were saying Ooh. about me, my blank, and the spirits of the, at the Conjuring House have been filling me in. Yeah, so that's... Okay, <laughs> okay. And what? again, intriguingly, just a side note... Because I like making suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> she was so very, very, very against even the utterance of the word demon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But Couldn't say demon. 
if she's being told disturbing things by spirits, mm -hmm. <laughs> if she, uh, we call that demonic obsession. That's, yeah. you know, that is uh, one of the chief and principal ways that demons influence people is by whispering poison in their ears. So there's wow. that. That's a weird. But that's just a suggestion. It's just a that's suggestion. Just an observation of behavior. <laughs> but nonetheless. Um, nonetheless. So, and the spirits of Conjuring House have been filling me in. You were just pissed that you got fired, and then uh, I will not pay you blank for the fact that you hired someone who burned down the barn, which we will get into. Uh, we remember what? that. Listen, the barn situation is a whole you other can of worms. Up. We'll get into that. <laughs> Stop it right now. And that was a week before we arrived, oh, yes. the fire at the barn. Yes. Yo. So she continues to say, grow the fuck up and look for new employment. Since you blew your employment at the conjuring house to your dismay. Um, I am not going into the woods with whiskey and dowsing rods, which nobody suggested that she should. <laughs> <What the fuck>? <laughs> 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 Nor did I ever say anything to anyone about my blank. That's none of your fucking business. If Boy. you continue to try and ruin my reputation and my business, I will file a lawsuit against you for there slander and, and tortious. What is tortious? I don't know what tortious is, but that is what she said. Wow. So not tortious. Yeah. So, um, she then goes on to say, <laughs> I have done nothing to warrant your lying hatred towards me. In fact, I am the only person to try and give you a significant opportunity. Not like her dad is a member of TAPS. And right. Could give her sure. plenty of opportunities. Yeah, well, but she's the one who's giving her the opportunities. How tortious of her. I know. To grow as people to, and to grow your business. I will make sure I include the investment I made for you. Uh, with the barn in my post if you don't stop your reckless direction of trying to destroy me because i will uh he will be the only one or he will be the only ones to be destroyed i don't know what that means i will never be defeated or destroyed there now again, defeated and destroyed the word destroyed is a is a is such a weird word it's yeah. a to choice. use in these things but i i, I will again <laughs> Say that that kind of language, defeated and destroyed, mm -hmm. is so grandiose and it so is. high born. Yeah, that um, it's like Darth Vader's talking. Yo, Serenity it's, said, "I'm getting my popcorn ready." <laughs> it, it's classic biblical demon talk. It really is, and because I it's, cannot be destroyed, <laughs> I cannot be de uh, defeated. Right, you you shall not defeat Honest me. You shall not destroy me. Honestly, this is her way out, y'all. If she <laughs> yeah. were to claim demonic possession, people would be like, "Oh, okay, it's the yeah. Conjuring House. We get it. You're forgiven." <laughs> Jeez, but the thing Think is, about it. is she <laughs> just just a suggestion though? Um, yeah, purely a suggestion. But she just says suggestion. that phrase so much. I will not never be defeated or destroyed now or at any time in the fucking future. So be it. And she also see that that language, like the language. It's about it's about eternal. Oh, mm -hmm. I will never be destroyed. I'll never be defeated. Not now or in the future. Yeah, you know, that that creates a, a, a delusions of grandeur. Uh, aside from demonic, it's also you know a a, 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 um, a sign to mania. Yeah. To, mm -hmm. to you know. Yeah. Um, possible she, psychosis. She cusses like a like a fourteen year old trying to be bad. Right. Like like it's just f word f word f word, and it's not even placed in with emphasis. Well, it lives yeah. in the world of. That delusions of grandeur notion that in order to punctuate the yeah yeah absolute authority that I have, I'm using this language yeah because it's both heightened language and then it's also um, cursing, it's also swearing. Mm -hmm. uh, those two things together, it is juvenile. Yeah, it know. is. It it's very is. low like, density. Sound. It's very yeah, one, <laughs> low density. Low density. Yeah, I mean one f word at the end. Could be like way more impactful than Absolutely. just laced right. throughout. Absolutely, yeah. right. a well placed f bomb yes. can can deliver a lot more damage than just saying it, you know, nonstop. You can tell right. how impulsive it all is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, so Satori then responds with, "We have absolutely no clue what you are going on about. We were <laughs> not fired. We resigned, and were uh, were even kind enough to publicly stay respectful." 
Now you're coming up with us being fake just because you're mad. We aren't doing readings whenever you wanted at your beckoning. Uh, we literally stopped doing readings for you at the house in September slash October because you just wanted to use us. There's plenty of witnesses to, to that. We are and always have been honest. That's really low to try and threaten us of lies, the owner's name, uh -huh. even for you. Satori also claims um, the uh, narrative things that probably, you know, yeah. made her mad too. But uh, now going on to the barn situation. Oh, I need, I need, I need to freaking know about the barn. Right. We were so concerned about the barn. Oh yeah. Like, right before we went, we weren't even sure that it was going to affect our stay. And Chris and I had the most insane experience at the barn. Yeah. Which was also shut down as a, this is common knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's even being common knowledge. It was pretty phenomenal. Yeah. True. He said the next pair of junkie shirt should just, uh, just going to say low density person. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes, actually, Eni, absolutely. Uh, Eni was on top of this before any of us. She's the one that sent the link. Yeah. And uh, like right when it happened. So shout out to Eni. That, yeah, she's like the reason. It was all the talk uh, when we were at going. Fitzpatrick Hotel. Yep. Like they oh, really? literally, was they it? literally canceled the talk on the Conjuring House because of it. Oh, oh. Yeah. wow. Wow. Yeah. So well, because it, at that time. At that point, it was still a developing thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, so you, you couldn't know. say too much. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, they just didn't want to. Sure. Sure. But for context, um, Cody and Satori have a, a museum of haunted objects. And they had talked to the owner of the Conjuring House about possibly using the barn to house the museum. Oh. Especially because cool. they, they were employees right. as yeah. well. Um, they had agreed that if they worked together to fix up the barn, the owner would be able to use it for event space and what have you, but the museum would also be able to be put in it, which mm -hmm. I agree would have been really cool, you know, to have that in the space. But um, uh, that they had worked on the, the barn trying to renovate it, and one night in the middle of the night, the barn caught fire. Okay. So a man named Steve who was an employee of the conjuring house. He's also a member of taps. Um, and he was hired to do this extra work, uh, to help, you know, stain things, uh, stain wood specifically was the job that he was first given. Okay. So, uh, he was given this job obviously because of his association with taps and, you know, Satori's family being, you know, so close with everybody in that team it made sense but uh steve had been staining the wood and he put the rags in a bag in the barn and for some reason they combusted oh so which i didn't know was a thing yeah that it, it is a thing that's actually a well-known thing what, what that the rags what do you mean how wait, oil, oil, fire? oil rags and varnish covered rags yeah, yeah. that's 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 not uncommon although but the it is fire uncommon in the from? winter right a chemical reaction Oh, because the fibers of of rags and and the and it, it like slowly just starts to have a a slight chemical reaction that ultimately can result oh. in fire. They always tell you don't keep like oily rags like bunched mm. up together or piled together or or in a pile for anybody at home. You know, be sure that your oily rags aren't like just sitting in a corner somewhere. <laughs> right. right. Well, and funny enough, too. So that is along the lines. Because that was of, what we were told, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that. That's, yeah, that's the, the full story that we. we yeah, it we was, were. It was we a bunch were. of oil, uh, oily, you know. It was rags oily rags that, that yeah. caught on fire. Well, and the funny thing was, is um, way after, like a couple months ago, there, somebody had made a comment on one of the um, posts saying, "I went when I went to the Conjuring House. They said it was a paranormal incident that caused the fire." Wow. So. Just saying. But that. we were far too close to the time that it happened for there to be that kind of speculation because it was all being shut down as, you know, yeah. this is what happened. This is how it happened. Stay away. Don't, right. don't go to the barn. So after the fire had happened, uh, Satori and Cody had sent the owner a message uh, basically referring to, you know, how they're going to get reimbursed for all the objects that got ruined in the fire. So there was a bunch of haunted objects and the place caught fire. Yeah. I'm beginning to lean towards. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. So they said in the message, we would like to discuss with you about the sum of money that we had lost in the barn fire. 
we're still planning on uh, opening the museum and the location, but trying to get it set up. We need that. Uh, we need that money because we saved up so much of that over the last few years. Okay. And so they asked for the money because when the barn went up, they had been told by the owner that they will be made good because it was deemed an accident. So and insurance money should have been. Yeah, yeah. The, exactly. Insurance yeah, insurance money. deemed it an that. accident. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, Satori and Cody gave her all the receipts and all the sums of whatnot for the um, amounts of objects and sure. everything that was destroyed in the fire. They were very thorough, apparently, about it. And so the owner responded to this message with, Satori, I did not get near the amount for the loss of the barn, nor did I get one dime for contents. There will be no reimbursement for your items Ooh. that were lost because of the painting contractor that caused the fire that you hired to do your shelving stains, even though he was Whoa. an employee. So Whoa. he was an, an active employee of the conjuring house at this point. Whoa. Yeah. I have lost close to X amount of dollars from that negligent act by someone with no clue what he was doing. So Steve was on in this. Uh, oh, and I bet. Oh, I bet they pinned his, his yeah. picture so he could talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> Damn. so Steve says that the owner was the one that gave him the okay to go into the barn and do the staining. She also was looking to give him more work in the future. So really, she, she was, was the one who hired him. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so Satori responded to the message with, respectfully, I'm a bit confused. You did agree since the beginning that you would pay us for our losses in the fire, and we have been unaware of any changes that have been made in that plan. You did also agree... Uh, and approve any work done by Steve at the time. So they had to get her approval right, for of everything. You can't just walk in and start varnishing. Exactly. <laughs> um, agree and approve any work done by Steve at the time who was employed at the house. As well, you did also say that you had insurance and we reimburse us of what we lost. I'm a bit confused about your point made. I was even doubting my own memory, so I went back and checked our records to refresh my memory. Uh, now, what I said was exactly what was agreed on. You said you would reimburse us for what we lost in the barn. It was no negligence under us because we both agreed on the idea. We all agreed that Steve could use extra work as you were planning to make him a full-time worker as much as possible anyway. We were not in any way hired to work in that barn. We did not cause any fire we were caretakers with a verbal agreement to use the barn as a business. And also, mind you, Cody and Satori weren't even on the property the night of the barn fire. Wow. So they literally had no involvement right. in that. Um, the owner responded to that. You are not taking any responsibility for your acts and decisions that led to the barn fire. And like I said, even though they were not here, uh, for that uh, fire, but I did not get anything near the blank that I spent to create the Paranormal Artifacts Museum. I can't believe you had the audacity to continue to push for reimbursement when I was not made whole, uh, wholly aware for the extensive damage caused by soiled combustible rags thrown in a plastic bag containing sawdust by a person named blank who did not read the instruction that said very clearly, highly combustible, dispose in non-combustible liquid. I'm not discussing this anymore, Satori. Best of luck on your new location. Ooh. Damn. Yeah. Yo. So, uh, yeah. So that's what happened to Cody and Satori. Uh, so not only are they being called frauds, uh, yeah. but also they're out like a ton of money from this woman. Oh, man. Yeah, the, especially haunted artifacts. The problem with haunted sucks. artifacts is their worth is determined by something that isn't measurable. Exactly. So, you know, you could have like a chair and it's just an ordinary chair, but it's a haunted chair. So now it's a thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. the kind of, of thing that happens with this, you know, type of product. So yeah, no, that's, that's terrible. Trisha said, if the owner did not receive the appropriate funds from her insurance company, I think the Sue happy person would have immediately ran to an attorney. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. One would think. But Although there's no indication 
that she has the wherewithal to actually sue people. She just seems to threaten it. Yes. Yeah. You know, yes. I yes. don't know. She we have yet to come across a single actual loss. Actual lawsuit. lawsuit. Although I guess she got the the whole property from a lawsuit. Fair right? enough. Yeah. She, basically, she, she basically used a loophole Dang. to tie up the sale of the property long enough for them to become desperate and for her to buy it, which is a type of savvy that is, dare I say, evil and or wicked. Yes. Low density. Low, <laughs> low density. density. <laughs> you know, Serenity also said, do you think the spirits ever yell at the lady for the heartache she causes? I would assume they are pissed off. I'm sure they're so annoyed with her. Or they're feeding off of it. That's possible. Yeah. Hey, Lorenzo, that, that appreciate it, man. Drama does, uh, does feed the fire. Right. Um, now... This one's a little bit of a quick one, but it is devastating for this man. Um, oh, Amy says she's a trained lawyer, but she's not licensed. Interesting. Oh, is she not very... licensed because she didn't pass the bar? Wouldn't that make some sense? But um, so the general manager, Brian, was owed $9,000 in back pay. That's a lot of back pay. That the owner is refusing to pay. Woo. When he That's a lawsuit. Yes. <laughs> That yeah. is. And I'm pretty sure he's pro because it seems like Brian has kind of stayed out of everything mm -hmm. for the most part because um, he probably is trying to get together a good case. Uh, but which it sounds like he would definitely win. When, uh, but when he inquired uh, when he was going to get uh, paid that money, he was told that the spirit of John Arnold. <laughs> Oh, here we go. <laughs> the spirit of John Arnold, who is one of the main spirits on the property, right. told the owner that he was stealing from her. So he wasn't getting paid. Only because a ghost told her. Again, wow. demonic obsession, spirits that speak to you uh, in negative tones to separate you from other people because the isolation of the soul is very desirable for the demon. That is how possession happens if you, if you go by yeah. the standardized... You know, infestation, obsession, possession. Um, that is how it moves. But nonetheless, that's messed up. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, uh, the the spirits have been talking to me lately, and they told me that people listening who are not para-junkies should become a para-junkie. Or we'll sue them. Or we'll sue them. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. So Annie said uh, she let it lapse. That's why she's not. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. Um. But, yeah, so uh, he told her to check all the cameras because there's a million of them in that house uh, and all the audio devices because there's also a million of those in that tiny little house wow. um, they have in the house. And it will prove to her that he wasn't stealing because uh, but because she believed that John Arnold told her that she refused to do any of that and threw him out. I sometimes have, I sometimes wonder if those cameras are recording. Right. Oh, yeah. Because I don't believe they are. No. Nah. When I saw that full body apparition, we weren't aiming the camera at it. Yeah. And I but hit him up. Cameras. And yep. I was like, listen, we'll pay. You know, right. I know this, this woman talks money. Yeah. So I'm like, we will pay for that footage. I need to see if there's anything on it. And she was like, no. I was like, okay, well. Heard that. So, and it's like because you would think that they would definitely cash in on the numerous things that they can show right. captured on those cameras. Yeah, yeah. Why aren't there more foot? Why isn't the security footage shown more regularly just as a commercial? Yeah. Just as, right. You know, right. I'm saying because I don't know. I, I want to say, you know, it's it's an easy enough thing in the contracts to say you're being filmed. on. We were told yeah. that we're being filmed on site so you could use it in any form of advertising. Exactly. Um, also, real fast, y'all, uh, we have uh, a little bit of yard work going on outside. He'll leave soon. But if you hear something weird in the mic, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it. But if you can, um, that's what it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. would sue him it's a drinking game now it's oh yeah like <laughs> no it is a drinking game but uh so that's unfortunate the unfortunate situation for brian i have not seen any further information on 
if he has an active lawsuit, which he definitely should, because he should definitely get that nine thousand dollars back. I feel like it wouldn't stand up in court that a ghost told her that he was it stealing. No. I, I'm pretty sure that that would be a very difficult thing to, uh, especially if you have like you know an employee employer agreement right. in place. Um, so just an interesting uh, point that was made in Jason's video that I found. Uh, interesting all of the employees interviewed in jason's video claimed that not only were the employees being mistreated but they felt like the customers that were paying to do events and investigations at the house were being mistreated by her as well which we've obviously talked about but i do think it's interesting that even the staff recognized oh yeah well if you watch tiktoks of of uh investigators who've been there they oftentimes list it as the lowest rated place that they visited yep uh, they yep. oftentimes will will discuss how much they did not enjoy their experience there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was never the it was never the space. It was never the place. It was always you know having to jump through weird hurdles and sure. you know doing all, weird hoops and and all kinds of strangeness. So yeah, yeah. And so speaking of that, we're going to talk about the rules because I don't know if you remember um, y'all watching on the live stream. I'm pretty sure all of you for the most part were around uh, when we did the conjuring house live stream and Megan and I showed you the rules that were posted on the wall that it's like as thick as the Bible practically. It was insane. That's a new thing under her rules. Oh, yeah. sure. Um, we, we, we actually got a, a, a sensation that these were new, like, yeah. because they also, um, would not allow for anything that belonged to the conjuring mythos. Yes. Like yes. you could only speak about mm-hmm. what was what was approved by the house and not what is generally accepted as the stories of the conjuring house. You can't so, suggest anything. Right. right. You certainly couldn't suggest you anything. You can't suggest anything. Uh, even if it would make sense historically. Right. But absolutely. Because yeah. I think that was one of the big ones was wondering if there weren't you know indigenous people who died on the spot even because it was a battlefield yeah there should you know the concept of there being casualties on both sides of a battle seems reasonable but we got shot down we were we told did. that we, we, there's yeah, no record of any native ever dying on this land and i'm just like ever yep literally seems like they lived here a lot longer than this house was around or this property or even you know the war well, and that was the thing is we're like, so you mean to tell us that only white soldiers are haunting this land? I That's uh, yeah. h- highly unlikely, just in any haunted property right. that has battles like that. But nonetheless, um, so when uh, so Corey and Jen had said when they owned the property, they said that there was never rules like that. Obviously, they had general rules. Well, like yeah. Don't, you know, like destroy yeah, the house. Yeah. <laughs> But there was never the rule that people filming at the property had to sign a form saying anything filmed there had to be approved before it could be made public. That's uh, that so that was the, the question of Trisha. Uh, that's how they got us. Yeah. We had to sign a contract that said oh, yeah. that they had, you know, uh, the rights to nix anything that we we put into a video. Yeah, we so, knew that going in. Yeah, yeah, we knew it going in and we signed a contract that stated that they had final say in the edit of our um, videos, uh, which seemed like it would not be a big deal because we weren't doing anything, you know, we certainly didn't think we were going to be doing anything outlandish, and we, and we didn't, yeah, but we, no, got, we, didn't. we got flagged so many times for making suppositions or even just conversation. We were like, yep. literally, we would have a tangential uh, conversation about something similar and be like, you can't talk about that. Like, yeah. W- but we're, it's an example right. of, of yeah. what we're experiencing. So it was very odd. It was very odd. Um, and according to Jen, the new rule about having uh, your footage approved before uh, it's posted, she believed in the beginning was so that people couldn't walk into the house and make up lies and right. things like that, which, of course, you know, is a very common thing. But when you own a haunted sense. property, it's kind of hard to avoid right. that, you know. But Especially when you're dealing with the variety of mediums and psychics who are, uh, who are being interp- who are interpreting uh, spiritual energies that they may have brought on with themselves. That may be, in, you know, uh, if uh, Madison's grandmother is speaking to her, then you know they would have said, "There's no grandmother here," and it's like yeah. you, you don't understand yeah. <laughs> the true. process right. 
of this, you know, of this type of communication. Yeah, she didn't get it. That's a great. That's a great point. Alex great said, uh, if we get more drama, this segment should be called PJMZ. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, like PJMZ? Yeah. <laughs> like DMZ? Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Um, Trisha said, but you didn't know she was this crazy. We did not. We did not realize <laughs> did not. it was PJ to this MC. extent. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and we are um, just, just to be completely uh, uh, transparent in this, we're not saying she's crazy. <laughs> nope. Um, th- this is the evidence that we've been given. We are supposing that these Suggesting. are ind- yeah. indicative of, you know, some form of of disturbance. But I don't want it to to come out that we're just no bad mouthing her. We're just we're just dealing with information as Reading presented, evidence. right? And it was all evidence that was presented by the people who were interactive and directly involved. Right. So if you go and watch that Jason Hawes yeah. video, you will see all of these and the people who actually received mm-hmm. these texts, you know, and yeah. received this abuse. Yeah. And um, Jason actually had because he he brought up this question to Jen and um, Corey because he had mentioned that he has footage from the conjuring house way before, you know, this woman ever owned it. Um, But he said that he had footage that would debunk quite a few claims of the house. Sure. But he doesn't think he will ever be able to air it because it wouldn't be approved. Oh, wow. And it definitely, it definitely definitely would be approved. (laughs) (laughs) Nope. Take it from somebody who went through the approval process. No, the hell it won't. She shouldn't have any say over a video that was taken before and without that right. agreement in place. Um, without the agreement, I mean, who? I mean, even us right now, we can say whatever we want about the Conjuring House. Yeah, we can say, you know, there was a four-headed demon eating squirrels. <laughs> um, what? The f- there wasn't. Okay. I wish there was. I was no, I don't. Saw, I do not wish it. any harm upon squirrels from four-headed demons. But low density. What I'm Chris. saying is, we could. <laughs> discuss openly our -hmm. experiences there but honestly it left a bad taste in our mouth Mm -hmm. uh, that we didn't very yeah that we didn't want to keep promoting the conjuring house in a lot of ways because we felt that it was so restrictive and so difficult and we wouldn't really want to subject other people to it we wouldn't want to tell other ghost hunters yeah go there because it's a great experience because the truth of the matter was the experience was actually pretty awesome yeah the ordeal of trying to express the experience was terrible. Yeah. And the product that we got at the end was far from what we would, we would have presented. Right. um, Because we're better storytellers. than Preach. Very true. Um, Interesting point of the rules too. Employees also have to have their personal experiences approved before they can share it publicly, publicly employees have to have this woman approve their experiences wow. before they can tell it on tours so before they can post it anything micromanaging you know desperation of power that it's un it's got to be exhausting right it's, it's got to be exhausting to spend your entire life worried that. about every thought and in, in everyone else's head literally yeah literally now we're going to move into poor reed <laughs> Poor Reed's experience. Oh, no. Yeah. Reed has his own section? Yeah. Well, I liked him, y'all. Yeah, he was he, a good dude. He looked tired. As a matter of fact, he told us directly something that they came out and said, this has never been talked about. Yeah. It was like, we, we'd never heard it until we were there. Yeah. Uh, the Crooked Head Man. The crooked yeah. Head Man, man. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, which we had never heard, and we are like, oh, mm-hmm. that's really interesting. We'll, we'll use that. Also, they wouldn't let us um, record his... Tour, tour no they do which would have helped us so much <laughs> right in in, yeah. in corroborating things but no yeah and poor reed had been through the ringer the week prior to our investigation so actually just a couple days prior um to our investigation so uh reed who was our tour guide uh when we investigated the house originally was employed by Corey and jen uh, but stuck around after the selling of the business and continued to work there. Um, and Corey and Jen had like nothing but nice things to say about Reed. They said he's very hardworking. Oh, he's a great he, dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, squad. They, uh, he, even though he was being mistreated by the new owner, simply because uh, he stuck around because he loved the property so much. And um, he said 
he was said that he um, would pour his heart and soul into that property. He was there all Dang. the time. He, you know, things like that. Um, so Reed was the caretaker on the night of January 19th when the owner did not show up for the tour. Mm, well, wow. the day. So uh, what Reed told us, because we asked him about this, the way that their scheduling worked was uh, if you were a caretaker, you get booked out for a week at a time or so. Right. Um, and you would stay on the property. I think they there's had like, like a trailer. Yeah, right it, there, it, right? there's a trailer. Yeah, right across the the. And old, the yeah. And so um, he had to be there for all of this because he was the scheduled caretaker for that wow. week. Um, so a day prior to this January 19th situation. Um, that was exactly a week before yeah. we got there because we, we were there January 26th mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when yep. I turned 30. Technically, we went in on the 25th. <laughs> That's true. You, yeah. you, you, oh, you turned 30. Yeah. On the, the yeah. morning of. Okay, yeah. so, so, okay, not oh, almost a week. Okay, yeah. got it. So, um, so a day prior to um, that situation, a message was sent to the owner that read, at this point, the entire staff is at a loss about what to do in regards to the business. We have tried every avenue we can think of to reach out to you. We gave a deadline of Tuesday, uh, Tuesday January 16th, 2024, for you to get some help or the staff would walk. So they've been threatening for that entire staff to walk since literally right before we wow. showed up. Um, we don't want to walk, but you have left us no choice. We can no longer work somewhere. We don't feel safe or being paid and can't get in touch with you. You're completely unaware of the issues that have been going on at the house for the last two weeks with no means to pay for them. And they listed the issues that were happening just a week before we got there. Oh, wow. Just mind you. So these issues included the basement flooding, the oh, basement, wow. okay. that cellar that we were in flooded and they had to get a whole new pump that had to be installed and a jack post to keep the floor from caving in. Oh, okay. So that was disturbing to read. Um, but nonetheless, uh, having to shovel the snow by hand because neither of the snow plows were working. Uh, the heat was a problem, which actually makes a lot of sense because it was very cold in the house, but that's okay. neither here nor there. We were like, oh, it's just an old house. It's January. Yeah. Um, there is a desperate need for salt. The driveway sure. is a sheet of ice. If we don't get a response to this message by 8 p.m., we will be canceling all scheduled events and offering refunds to guests for the next week. <laughs> for the next week. Oh, that was us. Yeah. Yeah, our, that would have been us. Our investigation would have been canceled. And keep in mind, oh man, that driveway, if it was ice, you would have just gone rolling right into the prairie there. <laughs> you yeah. Know, <laughs> you know, right. if, yeah. It, because it, 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 you go by the barn and it's like... Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can sled down that bad boy. So, yeah. Um, if it actually hadn't been for Jen, who was the one who took the initiative to fix everything that week, we would have not been able to do wow. our investigation. That would have been... Really awful, actually. Really <laughs> awful. Horrible. That would have been horrible. Although we also wouldn't know all of the stuff we know. <laughs> right. To, on top yeah. of that, you know, yeah. it's like not not only would it have been it would have sucked, but we would have been like in the dark when this happened. It would have been yeah. sprung on us, and we'd be like, "What? What? We're in we Rhode like, Island?" And there's we did like no a three reason. part series leading up to this. Like that would have sucked yeah. so bad. I mean, I was turning thirty inside the Conjuring house. That would have been like worst birthday present ever. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all God. right. All right. That's all right. if you didn't fall Ugh. through the floor. Um, but right. <laughs> anyways, um, so we will be canceling all scheduled events and offering refunds to guests for the next week to give you time to come up with a plan at this point. You do not have staff coverage starting tomorrow morning, and no one is willing to come in and cover until you receive some help. We are all devastated by where we are now, but we feel like we don't have a choice. We wish you the very best and hope that you will get the help you need. So this has been an ongoing thing sure. where the staff have been like, please get some help Dang. Well, let's face in it, multiple she ways. She is claiming to hear voices that are telling her, I mean, that's that's room for cause. That's cause for alarm. That's cause for yeah. concern. That is, you know, something that, you know, yeah. and that she actively tells people who it is that's speaking to her. Yeah. Um, And uh, being paranormal people, we can still say, 
the, there's there's a time to be concerned for right. someone's well-being, especially yes. when voices are telling them to pit themselves against people who are trying to help them. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so the owner responded to this. And mind you, this is January 18th. Um, they had uh, bookings on the 19th. But, hi, Jennifer. I'm on my way to the Conjuring house tonight. I'm showering and leaving. I should be there by 8.30. I understand and wanted to discuss. My app is completely down, and I have not been able to see anything. I don't know what the app is. I guess it's probably, probably video there. Camera? Huh? The video camera? No, I th- probably the booking. Yeah, app. I think booking, it's their booking know, app. telling them who's coming when and, gotcha. and, and yeah. scheduling and things like that. I, I, I'm imagining. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So, uh, I gave our ex employee name uh, was given checkbook days ago to get whoever paid. So that part I'm confused about. I'll be there by eight thirty tonight. There's a light on in the trailer. <laughs> the response was. Uh, she was able to mail out checks to everyone. So I'm assuming this is probably their admin person. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, she was able to mail out checks to everyone who needed to be paid. Corey and I ordered the pump and jackpot, uh, posts from home Depot. So Cody and Satori, uh, could pick it up and, uh, salt is still needed to be ordered as the icing just started the last couple of days. They mailed us a check to cover the pump and caretakers will check in and we'll leave as soon as you arrive if you want to sleep inside. We really do hope you get the help you need. At 8.35 that night, the owner still wasn't there. So they texted her a series of messages that read, are you still on track to arrive soon? Should we assume you're not showing up? Should we start canceling tomorrow's tour slash overnight guests? So I guess if we don't hear back in about 15 minutes, we will just start emailing the tour guests for tomorrow. We don't want to give guests too much of a short notice. Just let me know, please. The owner responds, I'm so sorry. I'm coming tomorrow. Even though she said she was going to come in that night to start working on things because they had overnight guests the next day and a flooded basement. So, um, uh, I can cover tours. My app is still down. The staff responded with, okay, so you'll be there by 1 PM for tours. Do you want me to screenshot the names? Both are booked at 13. So she sent her the, the guest names and everything. She was supposed to be there by 1 PM. Well, at 1255, the owner was not there the next day. Oh my Lord. So the t- uh, staff had to tell all of those guests that there would not be a tour because there weren't any oh. people to give a tour there. Wow. Because you know, that Burrowville traffic, though. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, so the staff had to, uh, and I guess Reed at this point uh, wasn't technically supposed to be giving tours. Um, and so he was the one that had to, Tell all the guests that there oh, are tours. Read. And um, so they had to put a sign on the gate uh, and everyone had to get uh, who was going to have the overnight that night got an email from the Conjuring House Oof. at 1255 the day of. Um, Yo. So and they told the owner, please keep an eye on the emails because we had to tell all these angry people that sorry we almost know. got this email mm-hmm. that's crazy we were just shy of getting that email that's absolutely true God. so uh poor reed had to deal with that was like the straw that broke the camel's back and reed had to be the one that took the brunt of it because Dang. this woman did so not show that up. makes so much sense i mean this man had like like those green Publix bags under his eyes bro like yeah. he looked like he hasn't slept in a minute well it's, it's a heck of a week Jeez. yeah um so, uh, and then it started showing up online that people had paid for tours, but when they showed up, no one was there and they were having a hard time getting reimbursed. Okay. Mm. So people weren't getting their money back. Big and yikes. There were people who had overnight bookings. So you know how expensive costly. it was. Yeah. Oh my Lord. So that was the big T that's what led into the big, um, you know, uh, big walkout of the employees, everything we've already talked to. Yep. Um, so mind you, that's basically the gist of everything that went down, but there was a added little thing that Jason posted about actually, because he was the one who's really been the face of all of this, you know, trying to get it public 
and things like that. And this woman went after Jason Hawes after it's this. Bad idea. Mm. So the owner of the property, and we'll, um, this video is on their Facebook. Um, the owner of the property claimed that Jason had trespassed onto the property uh, one night when she was there at the house, even though there were guests there who had cars. Obviously, it's in the middle of nowhere. You have to drive there. Right. Um, and these guests, uh, basically, they had left at like 4 o'clock in the morning or what have you. Um, but she recorded the guests leaving in a red truck. And she ch tried to say in the post, I can read it to y'all. Hold on. Oh my God. One second. Yeah, so... <clears throat> This is incredible. Watch what happens. The guy who pulled up in the truck at 2.30 a.m. looks like Jason Hawes. The guest wow. for the overnight investigation looks like Jason Hawes. We really are divinely protected, and so are all of our well-intentioned visitors. This is the third time I posted these videos. Some hijacker of our TCH account has deleted most of my posts, and I will find out who they are. Goodness. How can evidence of paranormal activity be so threatening that they need to do anything to prevent people from seeing it? How interesting that, that that's her take when mm -hmm. that's what she does. She suppresses yeah. evidence that doesn't suit the narrative that she wants to go forward. Right. right? And according to Jason, um, because she he had only talked to her briefly like a month prior to this because, you know, you're not familiar with a lot of the TAPS members. They were plumbers. So right. um, he was trying to put, she was having some type of plumbing issue. Right. And so okay. she had reached out to him and be like, hey, can you put me in contact with a plumber, a good plumber in the area? Right. And so being a nice guy, he was like, yep, here, here you go. That was the only kind of conversation they had. And now she's trying to say that he is plotting an assassin assassination attempt against her and threatening her life. Oh, these are... Uh, these are dire. That's a dire, dire thing oh, to, yeah. to to put out into the universe. Um, <laughs> Alex asks, "Are we canceling the Conjuring Hounds? We are presenting the information that is is accessible to anybody. We are talking about the unfolding drama of the Conjuring House because it does affect the uh, paranormal community. Mm -hmm. um, we are asking that you decide for yourself what yeah. what this information means, but." In the end, I don't think we have to cancel it because her actions seem to be doing a good job right. of running it into the ground, and it will not operate, I don't think. It, it cannot continue to operate, certainly as is, but probably not under the kind of management that is uh, currently right. in charge. And uh, Alex asked, do the Ghost Brothers have any comments? Uh, so we've not specifically talked to the Ghost Brothers about um, that type of experience, mm -hmm. but I can imagine because they had a, a somewhat similar experience with them, um, with, you know, editing and stuff. It was very complicated, uh, because of the 360 videos right. that we had done, um, that were going to go on Dalen's channel. And, you know, the fact that Dalen wanted to post his stuff and the whole like one channel right. thing really, um, caused some rifts for everybody involved, you know? So I, I am sure they're probably they they didn't handle as much of the communication as uh, we were doing this jointly. So um, JT really got the brunt of her uh, disdain for not following her rules, I guess. And but the, just the pure micromanagement of the narrative and yeah. and a narrative that is not in any way uh, expressive of the kinds of things that people experience there. Exactly. Um, so like Chris said, you know, take the information as you will, um, make your own decision. If you want to still go to the property, um, that is totally up to you. Uh, more than likely we buyer will. Buyer beware. <laughs> yeah. Buyer beware. Uh, more than likely, I don't think we're going to be returning to the conjuring house. Unless, unless, unless there's a change. In yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And which I, I, I have to imagine that that will occur simply because, um, if you cannot keep it staffed, you cannot keep it running. If you cannot keep it running, you cannot make any form of income off of it. If you can't make any form of income off of it, the best thing you can do is sell it. Right. And, um, but the point of all of this is, you know, um, you never know what's lurking underneath. And sometimes the scariest thing about a haunted house is the Karens that run it. So, 
Um, you know, hopefully this at least brings awareness to people of, you know, the situations of the staff and, you know, holding this person accountable for their actions. Hopefully, you know, the employees get their money back and all of those things. And we feel very sorry for all the employees that were mistreated at that property. Absolutely. Um, and hopefully Reed, I hope you had a good night if at least yeah. <laughs> when we were there, <laughs> but, um, yeah. And it is very sad because the, the property's history is absolutely fascinating. It's it a very interesting house on a paranormal front as well. And just in American folklore, right? Just in, you know, uh, never, underestimate the value of places that carry stories and hold stories because even beyond the the stories that you uncover through digging through history it's also the stories that people whisper late at night it's the stories that capture your imagination it's the stories that people make movies out of or you know uh grand suppositions about these are at the heart of the endeavor of looking into the paranormal and looking into the supernatural is that we are trying to contrast the world that we've constantly dealt with that is, you know, hard and yep. uh, so direct and so in our face. It's like just just the idea of of the next thing, of the veil and looking beyond it or experiencing something like that makes it worthwhile, makes it a worthwhile venture. And having said that, there's a house like the Conjuring House in every community in the country. You can find your ghost house right in your own backyard. And if you want to go to a famously haunted place, go to Waverly Hills. Waverly Hills they was were so fantastic. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Tina is absolutely a delight. To, 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 to Tina. So, um, yeah, go support them if you're going to spend that amount of money on travel and, you know, unless you live in Kentucky. And we're but. learning uh, all the time of these places that are having more and more you know, uh, openings, uh, other insane asylums and yeah. penitentiaries and, and uh, you know, uh, former, uh, you know, murder sites that all have, have taken an eye to this paranormal tourism. And um, it's going to have to be, mm -hmm. you, you, you want to be accommodating, you want to be cost effective, and you want people to want to come back right and so you know those those elements are at play at other places we hear a lot of wonderful things you know um and there's always you know the stanley hotel and uh, lent mansion mm -hmm. is a, a yep. is an actual yep. uh you know bed and breakfast that you can stay in um and we can actually probably house our entire team in a nice hotel for the price for of the price of, of trying to mm -hmm. squish us into uh, you know uh, a, a, a tiny rural uh, you know Rhode Island uh, farmhouse basically, basically. Um, but yeah so um, again uh, we hope that the employ the former employees of the property you know uh, find better places to work and Absolutely. hopefully they continue their luckily New England is woefully haunted <laughs> exactly you just go down the road. Pope Lizzie <laughs> Borden in the face. And we'll, we'll finish this with, I do want to, I really hope eventually um, Andrea Perrin will speak out on this because I really want I would wonder. like that. And, you know, um, because uh, the Ghost Brothers have a really close seeming uh, bond with Andrea. And, I, I, and I'd like to think that um, that all of this will blow over while Andrea is still able to you know visit and 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 participate there because it would just be terrible for her to get tied up with right. all the, with all this nasty politics exactly so mm -hmm. um but yeah so hopefully y'all enjoyed your steaming hot tea that was a lot of tea a lot of tea <laughs> a we, lot of tea next time we do something like this hopefully we don't ever have to again but next time we do something like this we should have some actual tea yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't absolutely. need to think about that. Yeah, we should have. <laughs> but that's fine. Next time, hopefully, there's uh, we'll have not a paranormal as... tea. Yes. Par <laughs> paranormal tea. Cool, but, cool. Yes. Um, so, with that, uh, my name is Madison Timmons. And I'm Chris Susie. And stay low dense, friends. <laughs> <laughs> stay spooky, y'all. Oh, low boy. dense. <laughs>